Carol here. Warm welcome once again to my craft room. And this was a graduation month for us. We had a graduation with our granddaughter from college and a graduation with our grandson out of high school. And these cards I needed to make in the one day for our grandson who was graduating from high school. Now, I decided to make two cards and just switch them up a bit. This is not an uh, original card. I did get the idea from YouTube and I will leave the link to where I found this graduation card. It was wonderful to be able to just hop onto YouTube and find one. This is a 4x8 piece of white cardstock, two of them, my 140 pound cardstock that I use all the time if I have to use white. And it was so nice to find this uh, YouTube channel. And honestly, uh, it was, I think it was called May May Made It or something along that line. May May was her name. And um, she did a wonderful job with three actually graduation card so I picked the one that I liked and it was the pop and twist and I thought oh this won't take me long <laughs> yeah right <laughs> yeah you don't want to do something that you're doing it on the fly wow so this black this is for the cap and the cap is three and three quarters by three and three quarters I don't know whether you saw that uh, that quickly I'm trying to get this tutorial up where it's not uh, an extremely long video for you and I thought also that it would be nice to have a video like this because you can use this card for any occasion it doesn't have to be for graduation that is what's so wonderful this is one and three quarters by seven and I cut out two of them yes I decided to go with the burgundy now I'm going to do the same thing with the gray cardstock I do believe this is all stampin up cardstock that I am using. It's a nice uh, heavy weight cardstock that I really love working with. And it's so good to be back in the craft room. Oh my, the last three weeks have been a busy three weeks for me and uh, for so many reasons. And um, I will, after uh, all of my tests and after a lot of things are finished, and I'm going for, this is a one and three quarter by seven also. So I did the burgundy and the gray because I am doing two cards. I figured, uh, why do one? <laughs> <Yeah>. <laughs> because uh, Mamie made it look so easy and I really did like her uh, card. But I wanted to change it up so it was more along my style. So I got out some of my um, stamps and dies and papers and shiny stuff and just sat there. I had, I think I started this around the lunch hour and I needed to be uh, in the truck and heading out to our grandson's graduation by 5.30. Yeah, so I was, uh, I don't do anything quickly as you all know. So this was uh, something so wonderful to just go on YouTube and find something that looked, um, you know, different, but yet had a little pop and pizzazz to it. Now the color, the school colors that I needed to use were gold, red, gray, and burgundy. I think that's all it was. Gold, red, gray, and burgundy. Oh, and the blue, that real vibrant blue. Yes, I'm looking up in the stars there. Well, I'm not sitting here looking at the stars. <laughs> <laughs> yeah, generally I do, but this time I'm looking at a bag of stars right over there. Yeah. <laughs> Taking the white cardstock and I'm scoring it in half. So that would be at the, let's see, four inch mark because it's four by eight. So it will be a four by four inch card, which is really nice to work with. I'm not used to working with a, a card like, you know, that size. But it was wonderful because you're working with the graduation cap and you only want a little bit of the white showing. So it was really nice. And then I'm going to take this uh, gray cardstock and we're going to score that in half, both of them. And this is the one and three quarter by seven. So I'm scoring it at three and a half the, in half. It's, over there it is, three and a half. So I'm just 
copying it here. I don't know why I was doing this. You can tell that it was like, Carol, it's just three and a half. You can do both of them. Yes. <laughs> Crazy. And then I'm going to flip it lengthwise. You can tell I'm following Mimi's video just to find out the measurements on the side there. And um, yeah, it's seven eighths in length. So you're just going to move your score score tool over. And Martha Stewart, it's in eighths. So it was quite easy, seven eighths. And one notch before the one inch. So that made it easy. And you want to give it a hefty, you know, use your muscles because you want to be able to see these halfway marks, the halfway mark vertically and horizontally. And you'll see why that comes into play. And it sure is great. Let me just tell you to be back on YouTube. I sure missed everybody. I really did. And thank you for your concern and your comments. So now at the halfway mark, we are going to bend it over so that the one mark, I'm going to zoom in so that you can see this, and I'm going to leave the link to Mamie's. You want to find the center point. Then you're going to take your bone folder and you're going to find the two creases so that they meet. But don't really put a crease in there yet because of course I do, but you don't need to because you have to flip this over. Then you have to find the center point on the, going the other direction. I was so confused here. <laughs> Can you tell? <laughs> but it all comes together. There you go. You're going to do it. You're going to find the center point folded over one way, flip it over and do the exact same thing the other way because this is the mechanism that makes it pop pop up with 2019 and you, you just have like a crisscross but what I'm going to show you here is make sure that you score it oh excuse me you fold the score on the lengthwise I did not do that and I want to show you the mistake I want to show you the actual I'm mitering this a bit I didn't want to have it perfectly straight I think maybe miter serves as well and the reason why I did this I'm thinking to myself I stopped watching the video, obviously, and I'm going to do this twice. And it did take me a few times to do this. I have to tell you, I don't know, my brain was just really slow this day. Had so much on the go. And I remember it so funny. Mimi said, you don't have to score this right there where I did. But I thought, ah, come on, Carol, you can score that. So I did it again. But the key is I didn't flip it. <laughs> Flip the card over. Yes. Okay, I did it here again. I had to show you this because I'm telling you. You wonder, not that way, Carol. You don't flip it that way. You have to actually flip the card stock over. I had so many things going on with this one piece that I had myself in a laughing fit. I had to go back and look at the video and I'm going, I'm talking to Mimi. Mimi, I, I just don't get it here. Well, what's happening? <laughs> Why isn't mine looking like yours? I don't understand it. But, and then I get out the original one. But if you fold the it lengthwise so that you get all the folds right, then that's a perfect example. I did it right the first time. But I am telling you, when I got it the second time, I just thought something was the matter with me. I couldn't get it. I thought, oh, I'm going to miss this graduation for sure if I keep this up. Well, that I always put my boo-boos in there so you can see that you know what even if I'm casing a card I think I had to switch over I thought okay what if I get a different the other color because I am going to do two of the cards or maybe you know what I'll do I'll just forget it <laughs> I'll come back to it but May May made it look very easy her site must be called May May makes it look very easy because, yeah, this doesn't look that easy, but it, it truly is. Just, I'll have the link there. Just press it and pop over there, and you'll love this card. And I just wanted to show you that there are variations, and you could put a happy birthday. You don't have to put, you know, 2019 for graduation with a cap. There's so many other things you could do with pop-up balloons for birthday or houses for welcome to your home here. I'm doing it again in red. Let's see if I can do it in red. Maybe it's just the color thing. So see you have to meet the corners of the score marks. Find there, then turn it over and then score it down. Then 
When you have it turned over, open it up. Isn't this the funniest thing? I'm looking at myself do this, and I tell you what, something wasn't right in the old brain cells. <laughs> yeah. I'd like to make an excuse up for it, you know, say that, uh, uh, I don't know, it just wasn't happening for me, but I did get two cards out of it, so obviously it did work, but I wanted to throw that in because we all have those hysterical moments. Oh, I'm cutting another piece. <laughs> yeah. I don't know how many I had to do. Isn't this a great tutorial? Uh, cut it, do it in half, then do it vertically again, and let's start again. Yeah, match those. Oh, now I'm just like taking it serious. Just score that carol and flip it over and do that on the other side. There you have it. Oh, yeah. When I get frustrated, the, I'm popping these things out left and right. There you go. See? Yeah. And uh, I didn't give up, really. And then I miter in the sides. But you have to fold this vertically, Carol. It, it just doesn't look right there. And you'll notice that when I go to glue it, that's another thing. But we'll go, we'll, we'll, I'll show you that later. That's hysterical, too. I'm telling you. Oh, I'm going to show you now. Why not? So I took my uh, ruler to get, you know, the Tim Holtz... Um, centering ruler so that I could find the center obviously and you're going to want to put the that gray piece you know the flip piece but you know you can see I did not fold it vertically and you don't get those wings stretching out and I had to take it off I looked at it and I thought I'm not even going to tell you what I thought that looked like it was like uh I don't know it was the strangest thing I just thought something's not right here but I'm going to carry on and I put some Nouveau glue on it and I put the back side down. I must have been doing this from memory because I couldn't have been looking at Mimi's because I would have had it right. But I did it on each side and then I opened it and I thought, wow, something is not, look at that. How is that going to flip out? Nope, that's not. <laughs> oh, aren't you excited you found this video? Then I realized, Carol, you didn't crease both sides. You can tell I just ripped the thing right out of there and then I folded it vertical and then you had the wingspan. You have to have that wingspan. How is it going to pop out? It wouldn't be called a pop and twist, right? There'd be no pop in it and it certainly wouldn't twist. So here I'm just getting all of the, you know, the detailed signs of making 800 mistakes out of there and then I'm going to do it all over again and hold it down. This would only happen if you had only a certain amount of time. I'm even thinking, come on, dry that up, dry that up. And I'm not doing it. I am not cutting another piece of white cardstock. Oh, no. I am going to clean this up because I knew I'm putting cardstock over this. I really didn't have to do that. I grabbed the cutting knife, but you know me if you watch my tutorials. This is what I do. I will spend more time cleaning something up than having to start over. And there you have that pop and twist mechanism. Yes, it only makes sense, doesn't it? I know if you haven't seen my tutorials, you're thinking, why did she keep this in the edit? <laughs> like, it would have been better to make a five-minute tutorial where it looked like you did it all right. But you know what? We wouldn't learn from one another if we didn't show the mistakes that we make. And, you know... The frustration level turns into a laughing fit and you don't even worry about it but this had to pop out and if you don't fold it vertical my friends you're not going to get a pop and twist so uh, anyway so I had these uh, dangly things you need for your cap and I had them from a thrift store that I bought on a card so I cut them out they were on something else and all I needed was the nice little danglies isn't it perfect centering ruler to find the center spot to put my brad. I took a gold brad because I thought it was only fitting. And um, yeah, just find your center. Then I took my cutting knife, made a little X, took my uh, gold brad. And you want to be careful here with pressing it down because if you don't make your own um, frilly thing, you know that thing? Trying to say there is the tassel. <laughs> yeah, came to me. And then the action wobble here. I thought I was going to use the action wobble, actually. Yes, but I didn't. And you'll see why after I get 
a uh, little ways along in this tutorial. I'm finding the center to put the bread, cutting an X. I'm going to take my gold bread. It's so nice to be able to use your breads and things you have in your craft room. Oh, I'm moving right along, aren't I? And I thought it would be kind of nice to have this uh, cap kind of boinging, but I would have had to uh, cover it, which I end up doing anyway. Look at this. Don't ask me why I put the double-sided tape just on each side of the bread. Now, Mamie did not do this, but I thought to myself, okay, set that up there, and then I'm going to cover it with black cardstock and take the boing boing thing off. I just didn't like the way it positioned itself on the white cardstock for some reason. It didn't do it for me and so I thought no I'm not going to do that. So I scored this long piece at one and three quarters, three and a half, and five and one quarter. So you have equal squares across the seven inch. This is the one and three quarter by seven inch piece. Then you're going to put your little gold. I'm working with the colors of the school. So that's why you see the burgundy, the gold, the red, the black, and uh, the bright blue there, that royal blue. And so here, this the gold pieces, is the squares are one and a half by one and a half inch. I needed eight of them. If you're doing one card, you need four, right, obviously. And this is my favorite things, glitter, six by six papers, where the glitter doesn't fall off, yet it looks so nice and sparkly. So I did that to put inside, and now I thought I'd get out some silver and cut out the one inch uh, circles. So I needed eight of those. There's my cap. And oh yeah, you know me with my gold, I have to get a little bit of gold. And see how that, that the action wobble didn't do it for the cap, not on this particular card for me. So I thought, no, I want it to seat on there. I don't want it going all over the place. I think the, the pop, you know, mechanism that's on the inside was enough. So here you go. You want to place this down over the burgundy paper. Isn't that pretty? And I shouldn't say pretty because for our grandson. But uh, yeah, I'm going to cut that off and I need to make four more because I am making two cards. Oh, gray was one of the colors also. Isn't that something? So it was black and gray and gold and burgundy and royal blue and red. Phew, that's a lot of school colors, isn't it? And uh, yeah, I had called the school to see what the school colors were before I went ahead and made the card. You're going to want your school colors. And then I just took the Nouveau glue because it does stick very well. And especially if you're using, you know, uh, glitter on glitter with the circles on the squares. So here I'm just going across and making sure um, all of them are cute because this is going to be the actual uh, pop-up mechanism for this card. Yeah. So, um, and then the cap I learned at watching this video is called, a, it's a motor... Uh, motorboard cap or I found out it's called an Oxford cap. I just call it a graduation cap but you know uh, in our day it was a graduation cap. I didn't know it was a motor 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 m-o-t-a-r a motorboard. Isn't that funny it sounds funny to pronounce that. Anywho, yes so I get the circles on the squares and the squares on the squares and then we need 2019. So this was like awesome. Oh, I'm flying here. It's nice to have an editing program, isn't it, where you can just speed it up or, you know, you just spent the afternoon with me like you usually do when I do tutorials, right? This is like only, you know, it's under 40 minutes, I think. So here we go. I'm getting that all on there. Oh yeah, press it down. It's the you're going on top of glitter, so you want to make sure it's... Uh, I think I did set a book on top of it, too, uh, at, you know, and went on to the cap. Yes, I went to the stars. Yes. So here we got the silver and the red and the royal blue. So I got my picky tool, and I started putting these on. Did I? Oh, I had to take some of the glue. I got a little bit excited there. I didn't have the end, I don't think, on my, I was running low on the Nouveau glue. I don't know. Something was happening where I was squirting it out big time. And, uh, but that's okay. That's why you have baby wipes. And I did a red, a silver, and a blue. 
on each one, three of them on each square. And I think, I'm pretty sure that Mamie's card had the stars on it as well. So it was kind of nice to do it this way. And I think it's wonderful to have a, you know, when one person is trying to inspire another person, we get to go on each other's t uh, videos and see what we uh, are creations, you know, what we put into the card. And it was so nice to learn how to do a pop-up card like this uh, from Maymay's tutorial. So thank you so much, Maymay, for, um, you know, doing the measuring work for me. That's a huge one right there. So once I get all the stars on both of them, I put it back. And then I thought, you know what, I am going to put the double-sided roll here, the scotch roll. And it doesn't have to look beauteous, it just has to be on there because I am going to lift it up. I did want that little lift, even though I didn't use the wobble, the action wobble on there. I did cut it off, but I did want it raised up and I put another piece of black cardstock. And this is the Michaels 110 pound, and that this is the heaviest black cardstock. Oh, excuse me, I'm doing my. Um, my cap, my Oxford cap, my graduation cap, my motorboard cap, and um, yeah, mortar. It's mortar, not motor. It's mortar board. Make no wonder it sounded crazy. Oh, Carol, get it right. So here we go. I'm taking this off, and then I'm going to grab that super thick. It's as thick as my 140 pound cardstock, and it is at Michaels. And if you're looking for thick cardstock in black, the other colors that Michaels has, I just want to warn you, they aren't as thick as this black, okay? This is the thickest black cardstock out there, and I've tried a lot of them, and I stick with this one. I always have, um, you know, a package on hand because it's just wonderful, and here you go. You're not going to see that line when you put it down because I am going to stick it with liquid glue. And here, I'm just going to, yeah, I made the mistake of trying to put a crease in it when I already had the mechanism in there. That's okay, you're not going to see it. And then I turned around on my chair, and I saw this paper. Remember back in the day, I'm telling you, this paper, I think I started crafting just over five years ago, and uh, making cards. And this is so thin. Remember, you used to get like about 100 sheets on uh, 12 by 12 pack and it was crazy thin so I took my ATG gun and it looked it had stars on it and they were red and silver I mean come on this was just just right I was so excited that everything was falling into place now it's very thin paper and I generally don't work with thin paper but this Kate you know that's why I guess we hoard things right because one day you will use it and once you put double-sided tape or ATG tape on it, it's not coming up, okay? So because it's so thin, you are not going to work it. Look at one of these was crooked. Oh, yes. And I thought, I can't give that up. And I don't have time to be making another piece and have all that yuck on the white cardstock. So you know what I did? I had this filigree from another die sitting on my desk. I ran it through this small Xyron machine and the bottom of it on that uh, crooked corner filled it in perfectly. It wasn't too feminine because it was for our grandson. I didn't want it to look too, you know. Yeah, look at that. And you can hardly tell that it was just cut a little bit off. And that's all right because we always find something to cover those little things up, don't we? It's wonderful. So there we have the twist thing. Now you are, I need to have, it's wonderful, I got to use, I think this is MFT numbers that I used on an alphabet die, alphabet number uh, stamp set. So I took out 2019 and we're going to stamp that because I needed to do it on red paper because one of their school colors is the red. So I decided to use my LDRS Creative um, clear embossing pad and it's like the Versamark put you know a lot of them on there. I actually put baby powder on there so I wouldn't get all of the black marks because you know what? That's in the oh I did. Yes I did. And um, 
You can see that my chili jar there has my baby powder and I didn't want any black strays because working with black embossing powder, there's something about it that if you don't put that uh, powder down, you are going to, you know, wish you did. <laughs> so I cut them out and you know what? I should have just taken um, a three quarter inch punch, but I couldn't find my three quarter inch. I had the half inch and I had the one inch. So I thought, you know what, I didn't want to cover up most of the silver because, <laughs> yeah, woo, graduation day, so exciting. I was so excited for our grandson and our granddaughter graduated as well. So you know what I did? Let's get back to it. I just cut them around the letters. I mean, who's going to know, right? Look at that. I was running on fixed time here. I had to move it, move it. So I did. Hot glue, that was the thing. I just got out my, yeah, I was making a mess all over the place. That's okay. And I put the numbers down with hot glue on the red, and I think it looks a-okay. I'm telling you. Now, this is the thing. On your mechanism, your upper right edge and your lower left edge on the other side, that's the only place you're going to put the glue. Yeah, you can see the little nib thing on the end isn't on there. I had to cut it right off because I wasn't getting any glue. So there you have it. Why it's upside down there, what was I doing? Let me think. It doesn't matter, I don't think, because I don't have anything on there. I just turned it around. I was thinking, boy, did I do that too? No, I just had the card upside down, so that's okay. And if you put the glue on the upper right-hand corner and the lower left-hand corner, that popping mechanism, oh yes, Mamie knew what she was talking about here. Then I ran some gray through the Xyron 6-inch machine and some burgundy paper. There it is. I think it's 5-inch, actually. And I ran that through so that all I had to do was set it on top of the white sheet and cut around it with my long scissors. I think these are the Martha Stewart Teflon scissors that I used. You can use any scissors, but I find if you're working with glue, the Teflon is wonderful. And I just butt it right up against the brad, pulled back the sheet, cut around there, and it stuck like glue. It just stuck. It was wonderful. There we have it. And I'm pretty sure, let me just see, when we get it done there, I do the other side. Yes, so you only have white on the upper levels there. Isn't that nice? And then on the back, you have the stars. This was working out, and I was a happy camper. Loved this. Thank you so much, Mimi, for making this so easy for me of having all the measurements. And then I'm going to share your link. And you can see I did have the boing boing on there and took it off. I said, no, 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 no. That's not going to work. Then I put the black on there, cut it off with some Teflon scissors, probably the small Tim Holtz ones, and put some heavy-duty glue on there and put it flat. The, just the, the wobble didn't do it for me. So I did this on both cards. It was so nice. I don't know. I really like this card. I'm going to use this card again uh, for a birthday or some other occasion. You know what would be nice? A baby card. Oh, that would be nice because you could add the date on there and I can think of so many nice sets. I know Stampin' Up! has a really nice baby set with the pram and all that stuff on there. And Oh yeah, I'll be doing that. And here I ran it through on the burgundy with my Xyron machine. This really makes a quick card to do it like this, you know, or your ATG would be fine as well. And uh, yeah, so isn't this exciting? You just butt it up against that gray sheet of paper right there and then just do your cutting with your scissors, easy peasy, no measuring at all. That I love. Isn't it coming together? I just love the fact that the background burgundy matches the pop up mechanism on there. And uh, I did the same on the gray. I don't even think I did it on purpose. It just came out that way, and I loved it. I loved using some extra paper that you have in your stash. I'm always looking, you know, to do that. And the cap, the mortar board, 
and the Oxford cap or the graduation cap, whatever you want to call it. Just put it on the front of your card and it is finished. I think all the graduation things are over now. I don't know. Uh, I'm from Canada, so our graduations were last week. There we go, from high school anyway. And um, yeah, so pretty. I love it. And I love the school colors too, the gray with the burgundy. Look at that. Isn't it great the way it sits up too when the cap is on the back and the card just sits up like that? Ah, oh, it's so classy. I just love, love, love finding this tutorial. And I'm just really thankful to share it with you. And then I took the, oh yes, I am happy. Happy balloons are happening here. But what I wanted to say is I took the Altenew. I had a congrats on the die. So it's nice to go to your stash and find that. And then I decided, I found this Recollections 8 by 11, 8, 8 by 11 I think it is. And it is your, uh, for my die cutting machine. And it is the cutting mat, perfect size, 8 by 11, slides right through my cutting machine. And you don't get any cuts in it because it's a cutting mat. Oh, yes, I saw that on YouTube too. I thought it was fantastic. I'll, uh, I don't know what link I saw that on, but when I was in uh, probably Michael's, I saw this mat. And uh, I'm pretty sure it was our Michael's. And look at that. It's a cutting mat, so you don't get any of those, you know. It's going to save on my cutting mats, my actual cutting mats. They don't get scratched up or anything because I'm using this 8, eight by 11 uh, cutting mat and it's so sized perfect and I don't have to cut it down from another cutting mat. Yeah, I remembered that when I was in Michael's the one day and I bought it and it's, and it's that beautiful kind of rose color. It's so pretty. It kind of matches my card right there, doesn't it? So I cut out the congrats and I put it on there, the burgundy on the gray and the gray on the burgundy of Kois. And look at that. I get all of the, take the pokey tool, get all the glue out of there. And oh yeah, I'm watching the clock here. I'm thinking, oh yes. I like the font on it. Even though it's very fine dye, it's nice. And you could stack them up too. Look at that. I'm just showing you. It's fantastic. A cutting mat. Who to thunk, right? that you don't have to have your other cutting mats all cut up because this is an actual cutting board. You know, you can cut it with your knife and it's not gonna show any marks. So of course, if you put your dies through it, you're not gonna get any marks. So that was fabulous. So I was excited and I'm excited to share it with you. Now I'm there, okay, I'm running out of glue and this is a fine, fine die. Oh yeah, it is fine too, but it is fine, get it? And I put the congrats on there. I do like the kind of uh, uh, squiggly font there. That's kind of cool. And uh, there you have it. The way it sits up, just like a school, just like a book. Yeah, just what the graduate wants to see, more books, right? <laughs> then I remembered in my stash, talk about books. I had this paper. I love this paper. I have used it on other projects. It's just stacking up books and I use the bottom portion of two pieces and it had the apple sitting on the books. You'll see it when I cut it out. And I put that on the bottom underneath the 2019. I cut it just right. I distressed the edges and I actually put some books in there and an apple. I mean it all came together. You got the red, the gray, the books, the 2019, the cap couldn't get any better than this and I am so thankful for everybody's tutorials everybody that puts tutorials up on YouTube that we can just go and get inspired yeah I had some glue on there but look at that isn't that awesome I just love it and it's four by four inch card right so that's awesome here I'm distressing this this is a uh, it's a thinner paper as well I got this at my stationery store I was in there one day and it was in the clearance bin and I thought this is going to be perfect because what I was thinking of using it for is when I need to have envelopes, you know, uh, for some occasion I could use this. It's eight and a half by 11 inch paper. So I thought that would be cool. So I remember I had it in my stash 
I remembered I had it in my stash and loved the apple sitting on there. All the colors just matched. I distressed it because I had to get something distressed in this card, right? And yeah, slide that underneath and write your note on there. And then I had an envelope that perfectly fit these. I had two envelopes and I was excited. So thank you so much for joining me. It's great to be back on YouTube. I have two more projects ready. I have to edit and voice over for you, but this one was sitting there and I wanted to get it out. So uh, have yourself a blessed week. Look at the caps, aren't they? Look at popping up like that. Love it. Oh yes. And I love the tassels, the 2019. Oh yes. And I thank you for joining me. And uh, as always, I appreciate your comments. Uh, they make my channel. Thank you that I ended up getting over 19,000 subscribers while I was away. Thank you so much. I do appreciate you. And I will see you on the next project. Enjoy the pictures, everybody. Take care.